Well, welcome everybody. Good morning uh, or good afternoon, depending on where you're from. I suppose some folks it might be good evening. Mm. Um, this is Kurt Frankenberg uh, with Radioactive Trading, and uh, my good friend Mike Chepka is joining me online. Hello, Mike. Hello, Kurt. How are we doing out in Colorado today? <laughs> I'm enjoying myself, and uh, uh, hey, I wanted to do something real quick before we just jump in uh, today. I wanted to ask our uh, webinar audience how the sound is, okay, because we uh, have made a couple of changes, uh, and uh, and I wonder if the sound is coming across. We I know that we've heard... Uh, uh, you know complaints in the past, and and, and we just want to see if if our uh, if we're solving it, okay? If we're getting any closer, uh, so uh, please, if you would, uh, send it in. Uh, okay, we got a couple of folks saying it's good. Um, Glenn wants to know what we changed. Uh, well, I, I had somebody much smarter than me look at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> sound is fine. Sound is fine. Good. Sound is great. Audio is fine, and uh, Glenn, if I could tell you what we changed, I I wouldn't need somebody smarter than me, would I? <laughs> so, <laughs> very good. Okay. Well, hey, uh, let's uh, let's dive in with both feet. Okay. Uh, this is um, uh, the lesson that I was talking about, and uh, uh, I just I wanted to do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Kurt Frankenberg. Uh, many of you have attended these webinars before. Uh, as you may know, I'm a martial arts instructor. I've been teaching martial arts. Uh, professionally since 1986 and still continue to run a, a little mixed martial arts studio in Palmer Lake, Colorado. Um, along the way, there was, there was a time uh, during which I was, I was making five figures a month teaching karate mm. and uh, needed to squirrel that money away somewhere and I started getting into real estate and I very quickly found out that I didn't have a stomach for it. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, did, didn't like uh, all the different details that you had to deal with. And uh, I got really attracted to the stock market, and uh, attended one of these seminars uh, that uh, on the weekend. You know, they're going to teach you how to do um, bull call spreads and credit, you know, credit spreads and and uh, selling covered calls and and um, oh gosh, uh, all kinds of leverage type type things. And uh, I ended up doing okay for a little while, and then getting in severe trouble. Mm -hmm. Lost almost all of my life savings. And uh, uh, it, it was about three years before I could even <laughs> put enough money together to uh, get back into the market. It, it, it was a disaster. Um, the thing is, though, I was just following directions. I was just doing what I had been taught, uh, looking at the uh, possible gains and paying no attention to the risks, and uh, got really hurt. So I made it my mission, first of all, to figure out how to never let that happen again. And then secondly, uh, I began blogging about it. And uh, eventually, some folks asked me if uh, I had written a book, and I said, "You know what? If you buy the book, I'll write it." <laughs> and in truth, I actually sold two thousand dollars worth of uh, copies before I uh, wrote a single page. I, I I did write an outline and told everybody. I disclosed to everybody. I said, "Look, you know, what? here's the outline, and, and and if you believe in it enough, uh, I'll give you a pre-publication um, discount." If I don't get enough orders, I will refund your money. And I put a little PayPal button up on my site. This was back in 2002. Well, um, Mike, I, I found myself obligated. We got $2,000 worth of orders, and, and, they, and they kept pouring in after that. And I said, well, okay, I'll start writing. And, and uh, four months later, the blueprint was uh, ready for publication. Um, so anyway, that's, that's a little bit about my story. Uh, it's undergone quite a few changes since then, including um, some, some edits and, and uh, uh, some additions uh, proposed by, by Power Options. Mike, um, uh, let's hear a little bit about you and your story and how we came to work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have our audience uh, uh, do, uh, oh gosh, some real good uh, introductions too. So go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. I've been working with Ernie Zarenner and the Power Options staff for the past eight years. Uh, I got into options trading uh, much the same as most of our clients, most of our attendees. I, uh, you know, applied to trade options and I was approved to do covered calls and uh, started doing that. And then I quickly learned uh, over about uh, eight or ten months period, I, I learned that, uh, you know, there's something missing here. So I started trading standard callers, which still had a capped gain, but at least I had limited risk. And I, of course, branched out, started doing spread trades, and I was doing calendar spreads for a while. I really enjoyed those until the market taught me why I shouldn't enjoy those. Uh, <laughs> and so about uh, three years ago, uh, one of my clients, uh, using the Power Options tools, called up and needed some assistance 
setting up our historical search, the historical suite of tools to identify certain types of married put positions. And uh, I walked through the tools and showed him how to do that. And then, you know, just looking at it, part of my job is I like to make uh, comments about the strategy or the risks that I see. And I was concerned that the position this customer is trading wasn't going to make any money. It just didn't look like it was going to work. We're going to see why in a minute, why I had this response in a moment. And of course, the customer's response was, well, why don't you come and join me for one of my free webinars? I'll show you exactly how I make money with these protected positions. And of course, as you figured out, the customer was Kurt. And I was so impressed with the technique after joining the free webinar that I uh, invited Ernie to join me for the next two free webinars. And he was so impressed with the technique that he decided to partner up with Kurt. We enhanced some of the tools and power options to work specifically for radioactive traders in the married put menus and the portfolio tools. And uh, Ernie and I have been trading this and thankfully trading this technique uh, for the past three and a half years now. It's almost coming, yes, three and a half years essentially. Man, it, it always makes me happy, Mike, to hear that fellow traders are happy that they're using the radioactive techniques. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, last year, for example, you had a really good year where, for example, one of your picks, uh, you made 59.8%. Uh, on one of your stock plays with 300 shares. Mm -hmm. um, but that wouldn't be something to brag about if you had suffered too many losses beforehand. Right, um, right. You haven't had a loss uh, in, in higher than single digits since uh, 2008, is that correct? That is correct, yes, on my married put positions. I trade other positions too, a little spread trades here and there, about 10% of my port, 10 to 15% of my portfolio might be in spread trades, about 20 five to thirty percent of my trading capital is in standard collars so there's still single risk and then the rest of it that I'm trading with the other sixty percent or so I'm doing just with married put positions and Very all my cool. married puts and standard collars are you I usually keep them the risks of single digits um, mm -hmm. those of you who own the blueprint know that at times you might do an income method number nine position which might increase the initial risk slightly but reposition uh, the RPM uh, but I rarely try to let that go above uh, single digits as well if I make that adjustment also. Very cool. Okay, so, so Mike's done very well as far as protecting himself, even through you know, these, uh, some of these tough times. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, I'm going to ask everybody to introduce themselves. Okay? And obviously, it's not practical. We've got uh, right now 54 people on the line, 56 now. <laughs> <laughs> Two more just like that, that more will be heading in as we as we go along, uh, so it's not practical for us to all introduce ourselves uh, individually. And we've got everybody muted, and, and we have to do that, folks, uh, so that you know if the, your doorbell rings, your dog barks at you, your wife has a question, or your husband has a question, um, you know, everybody didn't have to hear that. So uh, so it's just Mike and me that will be able to. Uh, uh, speak, but I do want to do this. I do want to ask what kinds of option plays you were doing now, okay? What kind of options plays you're doing now? Oh, and here's a, a range of choices, and you can actually choose more than one. Uh, options amino likey if you're not playing options or you don't, uh, you, you know, you're, you're not into it yet. Um, covered calls and naked puts are pretty much the same strategy, uh, risk-wise. So, uh, and, and it's the first thing that folks get. Uh, what do you call uh, first thing that you get approved? Level one trading, calls, yeah. Usually. Yep. Level one trading, yep. Long calls and puts, uh, spread trades. It looks like our spread trades and our long calls and puts are neck and neck. Uh, naked calls is one of the riskiest things that you can do. In fact, uh, the only thing riskier than selling a naked call is to sell two. <laughs> but, uh, you know, some folks uh, like to play it fast and loose. And, and uh, I think right now in this market, you're probably doing okay because of uh, you know, the, the stock uh, stocks being down. Okay, uh, that's been up for nearly a minute, Mike. I'm going to go ahead and close it and share the results. Uh, it's really close, but we've got 77% uh, doing long calls and puts, 74% doing spread trades and combinations. That's awesome because uh -huh. if three out of four of our viewers are doing uh, spread trades, uh, boy, you're going to really enjoy this because I'm going to show you two riskless spread trades today. I think you'll dig it. Uh, let's see. The folks doing long calls and puts, good for you. We're going to talk a little bit about money management today. I think you're going to really enjoy that. And uh, the 52% doing uh, covered calls. We're going to show you a way to uh, grab more income, more premium with the covered call and solve the, the two biggest problems with covered calls trading. Okay. Now our attendance is up to 60, mm -hmm. so we do still have folks coming in. And uh, Jim, Jim chimed in and said he's doing married puts based on the radioactive trading techniques. <laughs> Yay! 
<laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad to see that uh, you know so, you know <laughs> we're making an impact here. Okay. Uh, I want to also know what kind of uh, path did you take to get here today? And, uh, and then we're just going to blaze right into our our, our uh, deal. I'm I'm going to ask you or I'm going to tell you uh, some things that we're going to cover. And then we're going to cover them. And then I'm going to tell you what we just covered, right? <laughs> That's supposed to be the, the 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 formula for a good speech. You know, you tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you just told them. Okay. Um, oh, good. Looks like uh, a lot of folks have found us by way of a web search, and that wasn't a big hit on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we didn't have as many folks finding us by way of web search, but uh, today it seems to be the predominant deal. Very good. We'll leave that up for another three or four seconds, and, and then we'll uh, close her up, shut her down, and pow. At one point, th that web search was up to 54%. Uh, finally, it, it uh, leveled out at 50%. Uh, so that is the way uh, that most folks have found us today. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy, I'm honored that you ended up here today. If you were looking for answers on how, how to protect yourself, I think you found the right spot. Okay. In this webinar, I'm going to make you three bold promises. Are you ready? First, I'm going to show you the solution to the biggest problem facing traders today. That it is a bold pro promise. In fact, I'm willing to bet that you're going to take a look back and wish that you had done this sooner. And we're going to establish that here in a few minutes with a baseline reading. Then I'm going to show you a technique, and then after the technique, we'll say, okay, now if you knew this a year ago, would it have made a difference? Okay. All right. Now, number two, the next uh, big bold claim. I'm going to show you a riskless spread trade, which is done at a credit, and can take even more premium if the stock goes the right way. So, for example, you take a credit, Mike, on the front end, and if the stock goes a certain way, you can take another credit. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't get hurt with it. <laughs> That's the really exciting part. You cannot get hurt with it. Uh, normally, this particular spread trade would involve infinite risk, but in the context in which we will do it, it has no risk. Okay, it's riskless. Kind of cool. Okay, number three, I'm going to show you one of several techniques that I use to take a credit while leaving the upside potential of a stock completely open. Mike, there are four different income methods mm -hmm. that leave the upside completely open. I'm going to show only one of those today. I can't give away the form. Uh, but uh, but we're going to use one of these income methods. It's it actually takes a credit, but does not sell a covered call. It does not do anything that uh, normally would limit the direction that the stock could go. You know, or not. I guess nothing could limit the direction of the stock, right? But mm -hmm. uh, limit the, how much you can benefit. <laughs> it will not limit how much you can benefit if the stock continues to move. This spread takes a credit but does not use a short call. It's another riskless spread trade. And uh, Mike, a lot of my techniques are adaptations of things that are well known. I mean, it's something that's already known, but a lot of folks have never thought of putting it in the context that I have. Mm -hmm. This particular spread trade, uh, nobody does. <laughs> I mean, no, nobody has uh, has has shown this. Okay. So, now, uh, real quick, Kurt, I'm gonna. For it. I'm going, Go to counter, I'm going to counter your own thoughts and your own technique. I'm actually going to say that there's six income methods. There's five direct income methods that will leave the upside open, and there's a sixth one that when it's done in a different format will still leave the upside open as well. Okay. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess that does make sense. Uh, just my now opinion. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And folks, we're not trying to be vague, okay? The thing is, there's there's so much, there's more than we could possibly cover in an hour and fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's it's frankly, it's why I wrote a book, okay? <laughs> Here's the deal. Towards the end of the program, I'm going to point out the difference that knowing these two techniques means in dollars and cents in just this one example. I'll have given you these strategies at no charge, and uh, that's pretty cool, okay? So uh, let's uh, let's uh, look again at what to expect. I'm going to solve the biggest problem of traders once and for all. Number two, show a riskless spread trade that captures premium. And number three, uh, show one of several ways that I take credit, I take a, a spendable credit into an account without limiting the upside. So are we ready? I think we Let's are, sir. This. 
Rock on. First, we need to take a baseline reading. I want to know how happy everybody is with their trading results right now. So looking back over the last 12 months, so only. we don't have to include the ugliness of 2008, although, uh, gosh, Mike, when we did, <laughs> uh, we had a lot of folks say they weren't happy. Um, had a lot of radioactive traders uh, send thank you notes. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, just the last 12 months, how happy are you with your trading results? Uh, you can say, yes, I'm happy. You know, in the last 12 months, I've done fabulously. Uh, you can say, well, you know, I'm happy with my trading, but I can stand to be happier. Uh, you can say mixed emotions. I've won some, but lost some. Um, to honor my radio producer, I, I, I like this. Uh, uh, my radio producer once said to me, I'd rather take a physical beating than take a beating mm -hmm. in the market. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute, so I put it up there. Uh, and for those of you joining us internationally, this saying here, throw in the towel, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, particular, I think, to the United States, it may be, maybe to other English-speaking countries, but what it means is um, throwing in the towel. Uh, if, if you are a, uh, a boxing coach, okay, or mixed martial arts uh, coach like me, and you see that your fighter is getting hurt and you don't want him to take any more punishment, you take... Uh, the towel and you throw it in the middle of the ring and then the ref stops the fight. That's uh, basically it's quitting. Okay, so if if you feel like you're ready to throw in the towel, then that's uh, that means that you want to quit. Okay, all right. So Mike, I'm going to share the. Okay, we have six percent saying yes. I'm happy with my trading results. That's that's good. I'd like to see it be a hundred percent, but mm -hmm. but six percent is better than zero, and we have seen zero before. 21% uh, say, I'm happy with my training, but can stand to be happier. Now, Mike, uh, this is another example of that classic 80-20 split. That's the first right. Two lines almost, yeah, the first two lines add up to around 20, usually. Today, it's what? What's a little high? That's good. Yeah, yeah. 20, 27. I'd like the first two lines to add up to 100%, but they don't. Okay. So the first two lines, 27%, 48%, about 5 out of 10 have mixed emotions, say, well, I've won some, but I've, I've lost enough that it's, it's, I, I can't actually honestly say I'm happy with my trading. 12% um, are plainly saying I'm unhappy, and another 12% are saying I'm ready to quit. Okay, so we've got this 27% uh, that um, feel very positively about their trading, and the other 73%, well, I, I think we can help them. I think we can also even help the folks in the first two categories, wouldn't you say? I, I would absolutely say we've seen that before, and uh, I think they're going to find that out themselves, aren't they? That's right. <laughs> Here in a minute, we're going to show a technique that's just going to rock your socks off. Uh, and, and it's, it's well, it's one of those slap your head moments, okay? All right. I'm going to ask everybody, what do you think your biggest problem is? And there's only a single answer that you could answer, okay? You, you can't pick more than one. I just want you to pick one answer from this list of five possible solutions, okay? What do you think the biggest problem is? If you could solve this one thing, if I could magic wand and give you this one thing, what would the one thing be that would you choose? Would you want more time to trade, okay? Uh, would you like to uh, be a prophet, you know, an oracle like... Uh, like uh, Warren Buffett and only pick stocks that go up. Of course, you might have to hold it for 40 years, but <laughs> <laughs> but pick stocks to go. Uh, do you think that uh, geez, you just could use better timing and that would solve everything, or would you like a money management system that you know if you did lose, you just wouldn't lose too much, okay, and your winners would be uh, okay, or do you think what you need is a better trading system, uh, something to tell you like a black box, tell you when to get in, when to get out. All right, so we'll leave that up for another three seconds, two seconds, one second, close. Okay, I thought we'd get representatives, but we got only four, four oh, okay. uh, out of the five uh, answered. 4% uh, want more time uh, trading to be successful at it. I've, I've found that that uh, has almost nothing to do with trading success. Some people I know that are great successful traders stay at the computer all day, and some uh, don't even look at it but once or, or twice a week. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I don't think it even has anything to do with it. Uh, zero percent said uh, picking winners. Um, Seventeen percent say, "Look, I need better timing." Sixty-three percent, more than six out of ten, say, "You know, if I didn't uh, lose too much when I lose, that would be 
good. <laughs> and guess what? It is. Uh, this is actually the solution that I'm proposing for everyone. And I think that many of you that answered something else like, oh, I need a better uh, trading system. I need, I need better entry and exit signals. Well, I think many of you may reconsider. You may change your mind. You may decide that what you need is what we're going to show you. And uh, uh, I'm willing to bet on that, in fact. Okay, Mike, let's, uh, let's dive in. Okay, everybody has heard this little chestnut. It starts like this. Cut your losers short. What's the rest? Well, we want to let our winners run, don't we? Right. Cut your losers short. Let your winners run. Now, that sounds like a piece of advice that my dad gave me when I was a little bitty, you know, and I asked him about the stock market, and he told me, I know how to make money in the stock market. I said, how do you do that, Pop? And he says, buy low, sell high. And I said, mm -hmm. wow. You know, I'll do that. <laughs> and of course, I didn't know at the time. You know, I was a very serious young man. You know, uh, but I didn't know at the time that my dad was, you know, tongue in cheek. He 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 had a little wry smile there. And and the thing is, but when you buy low, you don't know if you're buying low. You might be able to buy low and find out that that stock has an ability to go lower. <laughs> have we found that out before, Mike? We have found that out before, sir. That's right. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, also, you know, when you sell high, you may also feel like a chump because guess what? High is a relative term too. You know, you may have bought in at five dollars and sold at six dollars, and that stock goes on to a hundred, and you you feel like a chump. You know, so but um, buy low, sell high is kind of difficult because both sides of it are are relative. Right? Mm -hmm. But this one makes more sense to me. Cut your losers short. And let your winners run. When 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 uh, when your position goes against you, you want to make your losses as small as possible. And when your position goes in your direction, you, you want to just ride it as far as uh, as far as you can take it. Well, that's the thing that I found out that all great traders have in common, but few give practical instruction on how to accomplish this. But Mike, I'm going to show something here that looks kind of like it's the <clears throat> opposite. Is this this covered call idea? Is this congruent with the statement? Cut your losers short and let your winners run. Oops. Oh, sorry, Kurt. No, it's not. Is it? It's sort of the opposite. Yeah. Uh, what you're doing uh, when you sell a covered call is you're accepting a premium. You're you're taking a payment, and then that payment uh, is in consideration for you sitting on the stock waiting to see what it does and if it does go up well then uh, it gets called out of your account right and uh, I would say that it's more like cutting your winners short because if you're right about the movement hey you know you've got to have a bullish outlook if you're going to buy stock in the first place mm -hmm. they say that selling a covered call is a neutral strategy but it's not it's a bullish strategy this isn't my propaganda I pulled this off of uh, options express you know uh, in order to make the maximum profit with the covered call, you've got to get called out. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or your stock has got to travel sideways for life. And uh, you know what, Mike? If if your stock is tra traveling sideways and it never bumps at all, how big of a premium are we going to take? No. Well, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we're we're going to not get big premiums. You know, a stock has to be slightly volatile for you to make any money at all on the uh, on the covered call. On the you know the, the selling the premium, mm -hmm. it has to be volatile. So the thing is, you you've got to be bullish if you're going to trade a cover call. And if you're right, you know your bullish expectation is the stock's going up. If you're right, well then your winners get called away, and your losers get to stay in your account. It's kind of backwards. What about spread trades? We have uh, three out of four of our players here today, our viewers here today, are spread traders according to our uh, uh, poll that we did earlier. Mike, uh, can it, can spread trades cut your losers short? Yes, that's exactly right, Kurt, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it, you you can cut your losers short, as in uh, uh, you can predetermine. Hey, look, I'm not going to lose more than this, and lock that in. But the problem is that most spreads cannot let winners run. You know, if if you're right in your expectation, for example, the bear call spreads a bearish expectation. If uh, if you sell a $55 call and buy a $60 call and you take a $2 credit, if the stock is at 55, Mike, we make $2, right? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. if, if the stock ends up at 50, do we make $7? No. No. If the stock ends up at 5 bucks, do we make, you know, $50? No. 
No, we, we still only make our two. Okay, so it, it can cut losers short, but it cannot let winners run. Yeah, and the condor, gosh, Mike, do we want the stock to go either direction? <laughs> to say stagnant and flat, don't we? That's it, okay. All right, so I got this crazy idea uh, about nine years ago that uh, what I might want to do is limit myself uh, in case the stock goes against me, limit it, uh, the losses, and leave the upside completely open. And this I found was congruent with that whole idea. Uh, Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Mike, I can only lose a s small amount. But if I'm right, there's really no limit to how much I can make. Would you go along with this being a bullish position? Remember, this isn't my propaganda. It's something somebody else. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. I think I lost Mike. Sorry um, about that. I was. I oh. <laughs> apologize. I'm trying to find the phone number for for Gary to call in, and I can't find the standard phone number. He needs the phone number to call in. I'm sorry. I was just looking for that, and I had to turn off my phone, so my headset, to try to grab the phone oh. number. But I can't. I, I can't seem to find the attendee's phone number to call in on that. I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually uh, unique to each attendee. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as uh, yeah. Uh, it's Gary trying to call in. Yeah, let me see uh, if I can find something here. Hold on one second. Oh, keep going, Kurt. I'll, I'll try to find that for Gary. Yeah. You know what? I'll, yeah, I'll just fly solo here for a bit. Folks, uh, the protective put position is bullish, even though you're buying a put. When you think about it, uh, the, um, uh, the covered call is bullish, too, even though you own stock and you're selling a call. Selling a call is the most bearish thing you can possibly do. But it's still a net bullish position. Same thing with this. Okay, you buy stock and also buy a put option. It's because you expect the stock to go up, but in case you're wrong, you buy a put to keep you out of trouble. I'll go along with it being safer, but uh, uh, let's go back to two uh, slides here. Uh, this one says that it's safer, but somehow I managed to lose everything doing cover calls. And I think many of you are in the same boat where, where mm -hmm. you've uh, you know, underperformed. Okay? Well, the reward, the potential reward is unlimited. Uh, unlike the uh, stock position, okay? All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to take a second right here. I'm going to solve the biggest problem that most folks have in their trading, and we're going to show how to structure yourself uh, in such a way that you could win, but you can't get hurt too badly, okay? Uh, here is, and I'm using uh, an outdated trade. This is uh, from about a year ago, uh, but the reason I'm doing it is, is because I played this stock twice in the last 12 months. Once is a loser, once is a winner, and uh, I want to show both of them and, and compare them. Okay, Altera here I picked up on September 14th last year at 27.35, and at the same time picked up a March 2011 $29 put option for 350. Now, Mike, are, are you able to participate or no? Are you, yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Gary got it figured out, so he's all set, and we're ready to go. Happy day. Good deal. And folks, I'm going to ask you all to hold your questions because uh, most of your questions we've actually anticipated because <laughs> we've been doing presentations like this for a long time. But uh, if we don't get to your questions, you know, I mean, if, if uh, the presentation itself doesn't answer your questions, we will pause and uh, um, uh, be able to answer a few questions. But uh, let's try not to keep Mike too busy. There's, there's over 72 of you in the, in the room now, and uh, we'd sure like to... Uh, uh, be able to talk to everybody uh, equally, okay? So here it is. Altera shares, 2735, the March put 350. Now the total invest is 3085. And Mike, uh, what did you say to me when you first saw this structure? <laughs> well, after looking through what you were doing with the historical tools, and of course our tools could still help you with what you were attempting to do, as I looked at this setup, I said, well, I understand that you're protected. I get it. You've got insurance. It's six months or a few months out of time. Understand, longer term, but you're really not going to make any money. You're not going to make a dime until the stock's trading over $30.95. It's over a 10 to a 12% increase you're going to need in the stock just to get to break even. And if you're expecting that big of a move in a short time period, maybe you want to do something a little bit different. That's right. You see, the stock would, uh, you know, according to what you were thinking, the stock would have to move, uh, what is it, $3.60 yep, yep. for, for me to make $0.10. Cents. 
that's that's the way most folks think of this okay because they think of you know the 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 put as a wasting asset they think of the put as going down dollar for dollar as the stock goes up and i'm going to lose on the put while i make money on the stock mm -hmm. well that's not exactly how it behaves that's not exactly how it behaves i'm going to show exactly how this one behaved for me and also how a losing trade with the same company uh, also uh, worked for me uh, to not hurt me too badly. Okay, but uh, I'll just say that that total invested of thirty eighty five. No, the stock does not need to go to thirty ninety five before I make a dime. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into that. But first, I want to point this out, Mike. I have exactly a dollar eighty five at risk, and here's why. Thirty eighty five is what I've put in. Mm -hmm. I have a put option protecting me at twenty nine dollars, which means that. Uh, if something really horrible happens, <laughs> uh, I can at least exercise the put option, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and get back $29. And so uh, even uh, looking at this 350 and saying, well, that's expensive. Well, wait a minute. About half of it I'm guaranteed to get back, right? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm guaranteed to get half of that back. So it's, it's kind of on deposit. Okay. So I know that a lot of folks are saying, hey, Kurt, you know, you can't make a dime until uh, Altera gets up to 30.95. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs> uh, by using the income methods, first of all, the riskless spread that I'm going to show later, I locked in a 75 cent profit by the time Altera got uh, to $29.40. Okay. Mm -hmm. The stock price moved up by two bucks, not three dollars and sixty cents, okay? And uh, I didn't make ten cents, I locked in seventy-five cents as the lowest possible thing that could possibly happen, mm. but left the upside open, which means that, you know, the stock was free to go on higher and higher, okay? So what does that do to the thirty dollar and eighty-five cent break-even theory? It's not valid, is it? No. It's not the way markets perform. And if you see anyone who says, okay, well, you've got this argument before, Kurt, too. You know, someone saying, well, aren't out the money, out of the money, excuse me, long calls the same as married puts but better. Well, anyone who's trading calls before, we had, uh, how many do we have? 77% trading long calls and puts. You know that if you buy a right. seven to eight month out put, you're not down $4 as soon as you open the position. You could turn around and sell that put for three ninety, three ninety five. All you're losing is the bid ask spread when you first open the position. That's the same way it works with the married put, and that's what we're taking advantage of as well. That's right. You know, if uh, uh, if if a moment later I decided to liquidate that married put, I would have gotten almost the same as uh, as I had put in. Mm -hmm. Really, really something. Okay. The only way that uh, let's let's look at this. If if thirty eighty five is the break even, okay, but my put is six months away, there's only. Uh, three three conditions have to be satisfied before uh, I'm losing money. <laughs> the first thing is I have to hold it all the way out till expiration, right? Yes. That's the first thing. That's the first uh, thing. The second thing, the second thing, the stock has to go down, and the third thing is I have to make no adjustments. Now, Mike, uh, do I have to hold it all the way out for six months? No, you're in you're in absolute control. Okay. I'm not in, in control of what the stock will do, am I? No, we do not control that at all either. No, but I am in uh, control of whether or not I'm going to do adjustments, you know, the, the for example, the risk of spread trades. Okay. That's exactly so right. I'm in Yeah, so I'm in control of two of the three factors that affect that uh, that uh, break even theory, okay? And so uh break even is not going to be uh be at 30.85. By the time this stock was at 29.40, I was bulletproof, which means there's no possible way I could lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then after that uh uh went on to take a 12%, okay? Or 11.9% if you factor in commissions. Okay? So uh so that's kind of exciting. Now, before going on to those income methods, I do want to share them, okay? But before going on to those income methods, I just want to start off with that claim and see if I delivered, Mike, on that first claim. I said I was going to make three big claims. The first claim is I've solved the biggest problem any trader faces, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just compare this, okay? If we had straight stock, a cover call, or a merry put, all three are bullish positions, yes? Yeah. 
neutral bullish yeah. positions, we're expecting the stock to go up in price. Right. Okay. Well, if your stock goes up 20%, okay, how much do you make on the stock? Oh, That's we're going to make a straight 20%. You're right, Kurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Minus commissions, of course, but let's just keep the math easy. Okay. And a covered call, we would limit our gains a bit, yes? That's right. Mm -hmm. We're going okay. to have a capped gain, but we're going to collect some premium. Yes. Okay. And the married put, that is going to cut into our premiums, too, Okay, or our gain, too. Uh, we're not going to make as much because we are spending something for insurance. So let's be real plain about that, okay? Mm -hmm. When you buy a put option, you do cut into your profits by a little bit, okay? Now, uh, uh, if the married put yields less, say 12%, that's a, well, it's a gain all three ways, right? The best gain was the straight stock. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's take our winnings and put it into a new play. All right. In this play, the stock goes down by 20% because anything that can go up by 20 can also go down by 20, yes? That's exactly right. Sure thing. And we've seen that way too often in the past <laughs> couple of months and a couple of years in volatile markets. But yes, it can happen and it does happen. Right. So uh, the straight stock player would lose 20% of his investment. Okay. The cover call player is going to lose less. How come? Well, he hedged it, right? He collected some premium against the stock price. It's going to have a little bit against it, so he's not going to lose the full 20%. Right. Okay. He's, he's hedged himself. Uh, a cover call is a hedged play. Mary Put is also a hedged play, and I just showed you a structure that would keep the losses down to uh, 6%, right? Uh huh. And that right. and that same structure also happened to gain uh, twelve percent. Okay. All right. So um, here's the deal. Okay. If you make twenty percent and then lose twenty percent, you're even, right? That's right. <clears throat> no. Well, that's what we think. <laughs> but it's really not right. See, I, I I hooked you there, Mike. But I know that you know the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is, the fact is. We're going to lose money, and here's why. Okay, you make 20% on uh, your uh, portfolio, okay, uh, and then you uh, play your portfolio again and take a 20% loss. Well, uh, you're going to end up uh, behind the curve. Uh, the same thing would happen if it went the other way. If we lost the 20% first, mm -hmm. $10,000 would be turned into 8,000, right? That's and then right. make 20%. Yeah, make 20% on your 8,000, then you'd end up with 9,600. It works the same way. Uh, if you take a win first and then a loss, or loss first and then take a win, the point is you end up behind the curve. Okay. Now, let's think about our hedge play here. Okay, the covered call. We're going to make a little less on the way up, and we're going to make a little less on the way down. Well, this mm -hmm. was the opposite of cutting your loser short money or winners run. This was cutting your winner short. Winner short. short. Yep. And 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 uh, though we didn't take as big of a loss with the cover call as we did with the stock, it actually ends up being a net loss that's bigger. And a lot of folks that have played covered calls over volatile markets have had this result. They've had uh, the, the situation where the winners have gotten called away without as good a gain as you would hope. And then mm -hmm. the losers stay in your account and drag it down. And it can actually be worse than just playing stock. Okay? What about our married put? Mary Put makes 12% on the way up instead of 20. Then again, it loses only 6% on the way down instead of 20. Mm -hmm. So we end up with a net gain. Now, <clears throat> this is a hypothetical example, but I'm going to go ahead now and, and put real numbers, real world trading uh, to it here in just a moment. But what I wanted to point out is we've got only a 50% win record here, and we're yes. making money. Mm -hmm. because of the structure of the trade. And Mike, it was the same stock. We played the same stock in the same market and had different end results because of the structure of the married put, which cuts losers short and allows the winners to run. Isn't that something? You know, it, it could be the same exact stock and you play it three different ways. You know, you could sell a covered call, I could buy straight stock, and, and uh, somebody out there in the audience could do a married put. The folks doing the married put would do better. Yes, absolutely. For the long haul. Okay. Let's give a real life example of this. Okay. Within the last 12 months, <clears throat> I played Altera twice. I already showed you the 12% example. I'm going to show you the details on the 12% example here in a moment. 
but first I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to show the, uh, the, the, the net results, okay? We'll show the net results, then we'll dig in and, and uh, get into the nitty gritty, okay? When Altera went up, it went up by 17.3% during the time that I held the married put. If I had been using the same entry and exit rules, if I had gotten into the same stock in the mm -hmm. same time frame, same market, all right, I would have made 17.3 percent instead of 12. Okay, but if we're going to compare apples with apples, you know, the second time that I played Altera, I lost 5.6 percent. That's because that's the way the, the the trade was structured, same as I showed with the in the money put far out in time. The stock went down 21.8%. In fact, uh, if I had held on it any longer, the stock would have gone down even more, but my losses still would have been capped at 5.6%. Here's the deal. The first time I played Altera, I made money. Now, I probably should have stayed in, huh? <laughs> well, we had, a we, had a, we had a customer ask that question during Tuesday's presentation. You know, why did you decide to get out at this point and if the stock was moving up? You know, well, you didn't know the future and you had hit your goals for the position. So that's, that's part of what's discussed right. in the blueprint as well. Right. You know, I mean, if, if, uh, if, if I had known the future, I would have stayed in, you know. Mm -hmm. But how many of us do? Nobody. You know, if, if I'd have known the future, shoot, shoot, I would have loaded up every single last uh, bit of my income, mortgaged my uh, uh, houses and sold my cars and uh, put everything I could into out-of-the-money calls. That's what I would have done if mm -hmm. I'd known the future. But uh, that's a silly thing to do if you don't know the future. Exactly. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, here's the deal. Uh, within this time frame, the stock went up by 17.3%. My reductive profit machine made 12%. Okay. Now, uh, I misread the signals. I, I, I liked Altera. You know, I saw how it had grown. I saw this little double bottom type thingy and, and kind of a basing structure here. And I thought, you know what? I think it may go up higher. I think it just may. I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, what happened was I bought in here, and I finally said, okay, I've had enough, <laughs> and sold there. In fact, Mike, I could have sold here and had the same exact result. My result would have been a 5.6% loss. So during the time frame that I held the stock, uh, it went down 21.8%. I, I may have held it for a few weeks longer, or actually a few days longer, mm -hmm. and seen it go down to 31% loss and then bailed out. Mm -hmm. Okay, But the fact is my radioactive profit machine lost 5.6%. Because of the position sizing algorithm that I use, Mike, I, I, I risked almost the same amount of money both times. And uh, even though <coughs> playing the stock both times would have made for a net loss, I had a net gain of almost $1,000 between these two plays. Okay? When you make 17.3 on your way up and lose 21.8 on the way down or more, and you have similarly sized positions, that's not good. But here, I had similarly sized positions, mm -hmm. almost identical, and uh, made 12% on the way up, same market, right? Same, uh, same time frame, but it ended up being a net gain. Very, very cool. That's how radioactive trading is designed to help uh, folks. Now, Mike, for those of us uh, that uh, answered, well, geez, I need to be better at stock picking, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the same stock, so what's that do to that argument? No, it's you know, it's not really relevant because timing comes into play, but, uh, you know, you can't always be right. And even if you find a stock that looks like it matches every little criteria that you wanted that you used to identify a bullish stock, that doesn't mean in the next 30, 60 to 90 days it's going to move up in price. Right. Exactly. So uh, stock picking, you know, maybe it is important, but it, uh, it had nothing to do with uh, this success, okay? What about uh, timing? Well, I'm showing the contrast between doing it my way and doing it the plain vanilla uh, stock. You know, buy, buying stock way on the same dates. So it didn't have uh, as much to do with timing. In fact, my timing was lousy. It was really lousy, wouldn't you say? Well, I mean, we could argue that you got out a little bit too early the first time and you just made a poor Wait, choice should... entering the second time. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but you know what? None of us have perfect trading records. I wanted to show how my how my uh, imperfect trading record is uh, 
helped by radioactive trading. <laughs> okay, uh, was a trading system what made the difference here? No. You know, it, it wasn't the entry and the exit. It was the limiting of the risk when I was wrong. Right. That made the difference. Okay. So I like to say, don't pick stocks. Pick stops. And I don't mean a stop order because those don't protect you. Mike, if, if your stock uh, dips 30% in a day like has happened to me a couple of times, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is a stop order going to help you? No, I could enter in a position and put a 7 to 8% stop order, maybe following the rules uh, such as Bill O'Neill over at Investor's Business Daily. Uh, many of our customers might be doing that with their covered call trades, for example. But the problem is, just as you mentioned, if there's a 25 or 30% gap overnight, that stop order is just essentially a market order. So when I wake up, say, oh, I had a 7% stop order, it's fine. No, my position was filled by my broker at that 25 or 30% loss, whatever they could get after the event was triggered. Yeah. Mike, I can think of two times that I was long on a stock and it dipped 30% after uh, an earnings announcement. Mm -hmm. And it was one time with Digital River and one time with Research in Motion. Right. Now, check, check this out. I played Research in Motion twice mm -hmm. and I played Digital River once. Digital River gapped by over 30% but my losses were 5.6. Right. Research in motion gapped by over 30%. My losses were in the 5% zone. And the other time that I played research in motion, I made 17% on the way up. Right. So out of those net plays, I had a 33% record, right? Oh, yes. 33% mm -hmm. 30, uh, gain. Success, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, not, not gains, 33% success, you know, as far as picking stocks. But uh, out of the three plays, did I still have an overall gain? Yes, you did. Ta-da! <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm not trying to convince people to uh, uh, you know, follow my stock picks. I'm not trying to convince people to um, learn a whole new trade timing system. What I'm trying to convince folks to do is exactly what's encapsulated in this thing here. Don't pick stocks. Pick stops. Structure your trades in such a way that you can't get hurt by more than single digit percents. Let's ask our audience what is radioactive trading done for you so far. If you could turn back the calendar and, and, and each of your losses last year, if you could convert them to 6% or less instead of whatever they were, okay, and, and keep your winners, would you do it? Would you do it? Think about this. Mike, if I had been trading a covered call on... Um, on uh, Altera, when it went up, would I have made 12%? Probably not. I probably I'm going to say no, because you would have had to roll the call once or twice to avoid assignment if you didn't want to be assigned. So you would have put more money into the position. You would have realized a good return, I bet. I don't think it would have been 12%. Yeah, I made 12% in seven weeks, okay? Uh, it's unlikely with a covered call play that I'd make 12%, but I'm not going to say uh, enhance your winners. I'm not going to say that to my covered call traders. I'm just going to say keep your winners, okay? But if your losses were converted to 6% or less, uh, would it make a difference in your trading? Let's go ahead and run the poll now, okay? So everybody understands you, you want to keep your wins from last year, but your losses were cut from whatever they were to 6% or less, or if you're diversified, 1% uh, of your portfolio. Okay, for example, you might be in uh, six different stocks at risk 6%. Well, if you, want, if you lost on one of them, that would only be 1% of your portfolio at risk, mm -hmm. right? So 6% so at risk in any in individual trade, or 1% of your portfolio at risk, because that's how I structure mine, okay? If you did that, would it have been a better year? Now we had, uh, uh, what was it, 6% say, yes, I'm very happy with my trading? Uh, and, yes, that's right. And it was 21% said they were happier but could be stand to be happier. Yes, 21% said, hey, I'm happy with my trading, but I could stand to be happier. And then we had, oh, I think like 48% say mixed emotions. About that, yep. Something like that. And, and the rest said, uh, I'm ready to quit or uh, Throw in the towel. happy. Throw in the towel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me go ahead and close this poll here in three seconds, two seconds, one second, and boom. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, uh, first time I'm going to – oh, everything's invisible by five. That makes it easy. Um, <laughs> 
First, I'm going to address the 5%. Since we have 70 attendees, uh, I'm going to say it couldn't be more than three people that answered this, okay? But I'm going to address the three human beings that said, I never had a loss over 6%, and I still have an overall losing year. Mike, um, I'm going to say that that probably has something to do with the other side of the equation. We say, uh, cut your losers short, and we say, what else? Let your winners run. We want to let those winners run. Right, let your winners run, okay? Now, uh, if you're not allowing your winners to run, well, let, let, let me give you another, uh, put it a different way. If you swing trade or day trade, you can take a lot of tiny hits, and they call it death by a thousand cuts, mm -hmm. right? You can take a lot of tiny hits and uh, um, end up uh, getting hurt overall, and that's what happened to these three people. Okay, I'm going to say uh, probably move out of swing trading or day trading or move out of whatever it is that you're doing mm -hmm. that, uh, that you, these three people said that they never took a loss of 6% or more and they still ended up behind the curve. I'm going to say they took losses too often and they didn't allow uh, their positions to mature because there have been a lot of opportunities to make more than you know 6% on the way up, hasn't there? Or last yeah. year? Last year, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of opportunities to take ten percent, twelve percent, you know. Uh, and so anyway, there's the thing, guys. Okay, now for the rest, of, for the other ninety five percent of the audience, the other ninety five percent said, "Hey, this would benefit me, right?" Mm -hmm. Twenty five percent said, "I would have said yes, I'm very happy." Before that uh, was represented by only six percent of the audience. Thirty percent had said no or mixed emotions, but would have said yes, I'm happy. So that's a complete change. 10% had had a losing year, but this would have made the difference. And 30%, uh, oh, okay, we're admitting we still would have lost, but lost much less, so would it have been worth it to do that? I think so, because if we end up at the market bottom, and we haven't lost too much. Yeah, we kept 95, 96% of our marbles. Yeah. Uh, geez, you know, when, when you buy at the bottom of the market, um, that's uh, kind of it's kind of helpful to have most of your capital still left over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I'm going to say that that uh, radioactive trading, just what I showed, would help 95 percent of our audience, and the remaining five percent, I'm going to say, guys, you, you probably need to extend your waiting period, your holding period. Okay, all right, good. So let's go ahead and hide that. Um, let's see, should we? Uh, yeah, we'll just go into this. Uh, let's 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 uh, let's uh, pause for a minute and see if we can take any questions, okay? And, uh, and then we're going to have to go pretty quick through the income methods, because we're supposed to finish it quarter after. Are there any questions? Well, there was one that there was a discussion I was having with Mark. It was a good discussion, and Mark was curious. He owns the blueprint, and he's saying he said, you know, the married puts are basically a bullish strategy. When we look at the setup, yeah. That you can't deny that. It's a bullish strategy. We're expecting stocks to go up. But he was asking about the criteria. And I think what you've kind of shown is that, well, you can use criteria. You can try to identify a bullish stock. But really, with the protection in place, you are emphasizing that it's not really about stock picking. Now, that being said, you still want to try to look for stocks that you feel are going to move up in price. What makes you comfortable? Kurt discusses the criteria that he uses in the blueprint. And there are default settings on the Power Options Married Put Search that reflect those. I use a different set of criteria because my account size is a little bit different, my portfolio is a little bit different, and I like to focus on uh, some different fundamental uh, tech uh, criteria, I should say, as well as some technical criteria, of course, also. Ernie, Ernie's are in our power options. You Fusion and Fission subscribers can see his portfolio. He trades completely different stocks than Kurt and I do as well. We have radioactive trading customers who trade the techniques just on ETFs. We have one gentleman who was trading it specifically with... Um, uh, biotech stocks, I don't suggest doing that. He was taking risks that were too high for me, but he was doing that. It's not really a stock picking system. Yes, you want to identify bullish stocks, but you don't want to go overboard trying to figure what is the best criteria for a bullish stock. You want to just focus on, you know, what kind of base criteria would you use if you are going to buy a stock? If you are maybe going to do a covered call or even a naked put or a bull put credit spread, you can use those same criteria and all you're doing is overlaying proper money management on top of those stock positions. I'm still expecting my stocks. I'm looking for stocks that I feel might move up 5 to 8% in the next 30 to 60, maybe 90 days. But um, 
you know that's what we're that's what we're looking to accomplish there right you know um and i think uh, part of mark's sentiment might be hey are we still in the bull market <laughs> and mm. the fact is, radioactive principles can be applied the other direction. It's just really easy for me to explain it in the bullish direction. But yeah, radioactive principles, they can all be applied in the reverse direction. Here's just one example of how that could be done. You could just buy an inverse ETF. Yes, right. And do all the same uh, types of adjustments. So so there's there's a, a thought. Okay. Tim All asked right. a real quick. I want to address this question too. I apologize, Kurt. Uh -huh. Let me just do this. Tim chimed in. I don't think Tim owns the blueprint. I'm not sure, but he wanted to know what would you have done if the stock traded above your put strike within the first month? Would you close the position or roll the put strike to a higher price? Well, that's going to depend on your SEGA model, which is discussed in the blueprint, not only for opening the position but for each income method. You could do both. We'll show. You could do yeah. an income method number five or six. It's going to depend on your goals your expectations if you're looking for further growth, if you're looking for income, for example. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the idea. You could do both. Tim, too. Oh, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, I was going to say, Tim, we're going to show one alternative. We're going to show what I did uh, in this particular instance because uh, with, um, uh, with Altera, the, st the stock did go above $29. And uh, we're going to show one of, of uh, several alternatives. Okay. Uh, so that's a good question, Tim. You probably want to pick up the blueprint to, to learn them all. <laughs> uh, John asks, when do you put on a bear call spread? John, that's a good question, but not for this uh, setting. Uh, I will say that uh, income method number six, the bear call spread, has the nickname, give me my money now. <laughs> and, and what that means is whenever your outcome is uncertain, you're not sure if the stock's going to go up or down or sideways, income method number six can be used. Does not limit your upside. Absolutely, uh, it generates income now. Mm -hmm. Takes a credit, and if it's done correctly, it is riskless. If it's done correctly, so uh, consult your blueprint and make sure you write in. Okay, Mike, let's go ahead and, and uh, get into the income methods because I know we promised that and we've mm -hmm. got a short period of time. And uh, Tim is going to really dig this, I think. Um, Altera shares at twenty-seven thirty-five. The March two thousand eleven twenty-nine dollar put at three fifty. Total invested amount thirty eighty-five. Guaranteed exit twenty-nine dollars. And everybody thinks that I can't make any money until the stock's at thirty ninety, <laughs> right? Or thirty ninety-five. I won't make a dime. Well, uh, let's find out if that's so. The total amount at risk is a dollar eighty-five. That's the difference between the total invested and the guaranteed exit. All right. Now, when I talk about the income methods, most folks thoughts go to the obvious, which is covered calls. But selling covered calls limits your upside. I've discovered a slew of different ways to take income without selling covered calls. And we still do selling covered calls as one of the, uh, one of the options, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, I call it income method number one because everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, on Altera, I used a technique that I call the money net to catch more premium than a covered call. Uh, for example, Mike, if you sell a covered call, and your stock goes up, if you want to keep your stock, you're going to probably have to buy to close, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I got paid once, and then I got paid again. And uh, that's kind of cool. That's, that's what the money net is all about. It's, it, uh, um, it catches a little bit more premium if, uh, if your stock behaves a certain way. And if the stock goes down, eh, you still get to keep the premium. Kind of cool. I use another technique I call the bulletproof vest. Tim will appreciate this. I bulletproof the stock so that it could not lose, but it could go on to better wins. Okay? All right, so first, income method number five. I'm going to give this away for free. On September 24th, I looked and saw that the October $29 calls were selling for $0.85. Cents. Now, let's just assume that I'm trading 100 shares. I wasn't, okay? But let's just assume I was trading 100 shares. Got it. With 100, 100 shares long, Mike, if I sell two calls, what have I got going on? you got an issue that I would be concerned with. You've got 100 shares. You sold two calls. So essentially, you've got one covered call position now and a naked call position. And that's just a little bit tricky. It's dangerous, especially if the stock uh, zips it up. Okay? But, but uh, here's the deal. This is not uncovered because what I did was use some of the proceeds to also buy an in-the-money call. I'll just let you know that the stock was trading exactly between the strikes. It was at 28.50. And because it was at 28.50, that October call is in the money. And those October, uh, I'm sorry, the October $28 call is in the money. The $29 calls are 
out of the money. Right. Okay. Now I'm taking a net credit to do this. Mike, if the stock stays flat, if it just goes uh, along and it closes at twenty-eight fifty, okay, um, then I'm going to collect again, aren't I? Yeah, your twenty-eight call would be fifty cents in the money. Your twenty-nine calls would expire worthless, so you'd be able to sell to close the October twenty-eight call for fifty cents, not have any obligation to deliver stock at twenty-nine. That's right. What if the stock closes at twenty-nine dollars exactly? Well, the 29 calls still expire worthless, and your 28 call is going to be worth a dollar of okay, intrinsic so, value. So I'm taking a quarter. I'm taking 25 cents to do this now, and, um, uh, and, and, and then in the future, I can collect as much as a dollar more. Now, there's a problem, generally speaking, with a ratio call spread, which is what this is. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a ratio call spread. The problem is that you can collect a credit to do it, right? And if your stock goes up, you could collect even more. Uh -huh. But if your stock goes up too much, <laughs> you end up losing. Okay, this the left to right is the direction of a rising stock, right? Yeah, uh, just that options right. play by itself. You end up with a bull call spread and then a naked call. So that's where that infinite risk is coming from. Exactly. Okay, so I could get hurt really badly here, really badly. Um, uh, right here, this is represented by twenty-eight fifty. This is represented by uh, twenty-nine dollars. This is thirty dollars, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the stock goes up a lot. I could get hurt if I just did a <coughs> ratio call spread. But Mike, if I've got the stock on hand to deliver, what happens to all that uh, that red zone down there? Well, it's covered now. It's not a naked call. It's a covered call. So you end up with a bull call spread and a covered call. So that infinite risk disappears. Yeah, I've got both positions, okay? I've got a cover call and a bull call spread. Okay, so here's what happened, okay? The the total amount invested for the married put is 3085. I do the ratio call spread which reduces the cost basis by 25 cents. Mm -hmm. Now my new cost basis is 3060 and I still have my guaranteed exit of $29 in case the stock crashes. So instead of a dollar 85 at risk, I now have a dollar 60 at risk. Am I going in the right direction? Yeah, we've cut down your risk a little bit, so this is starting to go in the right direction. That's our goal, limit the risk uh, using the income methods and potentially get to bulletproof status. Right. The income methods are meant to uh, reduce risk first and to uh, bulletproof second. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened, Mike. On October 15th, um, with a cost basis of uh, 3060 in the stock and the put, the stock had moved up above $29. It's expiration Friday. It's at twenty-nine dollars and forty cents. So, uh, with some time left in the market, a couple of a couple of hours. Okay, mm -hmm. or actually, I think it was one hour left in the market. I buy to close one of those short calls at fifty-five cents. Now that adds to my cost basis, right? That does. You're putting money back into the position, so now you've got an effective cost of thirty-one fifteen. This isn't starting to look real good. Right. I've got my guaranteed exit of uh, twenty-nine dollars. So now the most I could possibly lose is two fifteen, at least as far as we know so far. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. But we shouldn't forget something. <laughs> Remember, I said that there were short calls at the twenty-nine dollar strike, but I got paid again to hang on to the stock and leave the upside open. Well, how could that be? Let's find out. Okay. Uh, when I sold. Uh, two calls, two twenty-nine dollar calls per hundred shares. I also bought one twenty-eight dollar call, mm -hmm. and that was a twenty-five cent net credit. Okay, but on October fifteenth, I bought to close just one call at fifty-five cents. Okay, so now uh, what do I have left? I've still got a married put position, right? Stock yes. and put. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have any cover? Uh, do I have any short calls written against the stock? Well, you just closed one of them, so there's still a short call open, isn't there? But that's covered by something else. Yeah, it's covered by the long $28 call. Mm -hmm. right? So essentially, I'm left with a bull call spread. Now, this is why I'm happy that three out of four of our uh, audience members are spread traders already. Okay, You already understand the concept of a bull call spread, or you probably do. Okay, So after I buy to close one call, I still have a bull call spread in place. It's a $28 call. Uh, with the 29 sold against it, and guess what? It's clo the market is closing, and 
the stock is way above $29. Mm-hmm. Hmm, happy day. So I've paid $0.30 cents to manage this. You know, I, I got $0.25 cent credit to do the racial call spread and $0.55 cents out to uh, close the obligation so that I don't lose my stock. Uh, so I've paid $0.30, cents, but now I'm going to have a guaranteed dollar. That bull call spread closes in the money. Okay. Uh, I'm doing this in the closing hours, and uh, the stock is headed up, and uh, it's a happy thing. Okay. Now, automatic exercise. In the middle of the night, my broker buys a 28 and sells a 29. You know, it, he looks and uh, you know, or, or the computer looks and says, "Oh, Frankenberg has got the right to buy uh, Altera at $28 a share," and so he picks it up, and then uh, he says, "Oh, you know." Uh, Altera uh, shares are obligated. You know, uh, you know, Kurt has to sell his shares at twenty-nine dollars because mm -hmm. you know it's it closed at higher than twenty-nine dollars. Okay, so uh, essentially, what happens is I make that dollar. I've paid thirty cents worth of management, but for that dollar, you know, it ends up being seventy cents caught in the money net. Now, a plain vanilla covered call would have generated a net $0.30 cents in the same time frame. Here's why. Uh, the October $29 calls had been selling at $0.85, cents, remember? Mm -hmm. and, then I, and then I would have to buy back at $0.55 cents if I wanted to keep my stock. So that would be a net $0.30 cents instead of a net $0.70. Cents. So using the money net uh, really enhanced the, um, the return here. What's really cool about this is now I'm sitting on a stock that's up $2.05 from where I bought it. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and I've been paid seventy cents in the meantime. Okay, so here's the deal: the adjusted cost basis on the radioactive profit machine, the married put, was thirty sixty. I buy to close. That's my management cost. So there's my cost after the buyback in the middle of the night. Uh, my bull call spread closes in the money. So uh, my new cost basis for the stock and the put is thirty fifteen. Kind of cool. Okay, now what we've done is we reduced that gap between uh, the most I could possibly lose and the, uh, the quote-unquote break-even. I've changed the break-even is what I'm saying. Okay. Now, on the same day, I decide, you know what? I don't want to have any risk anymore. And because the stock is trading, Tim, you'll want to pay attention to this one. Uh, Tim asked about, hey, okay, what if your stock goes up above you know, your strike price of your put? Well, this is one of several things that you can do, and uh, uh, in, in hindsight, it would have been better for me to do income method number four, mm. but I didn't. I did income method number three, and what I wanted to do, Mike, was make myself bulletproof because there was an earnings announcement coming up. Okay. Uh, the earnings announcement was due out November 4th, and options expiration in November happens when? Uh, third week, so it would be the 16th, 18th, somewhere in that time frame. Something like that, okay? So uh, here's what I did, okay? I sold my $29 put option for $2.52. Wait a minute, how can that be? It's, it's, uh, you, you paid three fifty dollars for it. The stock went up by more than $2. How can it only drop $0.98? Cents? Well, um, because it's far out in time. <laughs> you know, there's, there's still a lot of time to expiration. This is October. That thing expires out in March, so it's moved down, but moved down only a little. Mm-hmm. Okay, and in its place, I buy a November thirty dollar put option for buck sixty two. Okay, so I have one commission. It's a spread trade, but this spread trade generates a credit of ninety cents. Mike, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Oh yeah, you swapped your insurance. You've increased the level of insurance if you look at it that way, and you generated a credit to do so. Yeah, I'm guaranteeing instead of guaranteeing the stock at twenty nine dollars, I'm guaranteeing the stock at thirty dollars. And I'm taking a uh, 90 cent credit to do it. Now, a question came through, would there be other reasons to do income no method number three if there's no pending news or earnings announcement? Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, no. I'll uh, say yes. But oh, actually, it, yeah. It as doesn't management. happen that often, but yes, it can. And if it, what I mean by that, uh, Glenn, who asked the question, is that let's say the stock moved up. I first opened the position. I've got to put five months out in time, and the stock just moves up. Um, on us, and I look at it and I see an income method number three opportunity where if I exit in the next 30 or 60 days, I'd be guaranteed minimum a return of 4%. If that matches my goals and I say, you know what, I see a couple other stocks, I want to free up this capital, but I can lock in a guaranteed 
4% return that matches my goals, maybe I'll do that and just exit the position a little bit early and then move on to other ones. If my expectation now is slightly changed and I don't feel the stock is a good long-term play, but maybe short-term, maybe I'll do that. It doesn't come up that often, believe me, <laughs> but it could happen. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Uh, income method number three is, is one of the ones I use most seldom, and in fact, that's why I'm giving it away. Mm. Okay. All right, cool. So let, let's go ahead and, and uh, show what the net result of this was, okay? I raised my payout by a dollar. Yes. Right? Uh, and took 90 cents to do it. And Mike, do I have any short calls limiting the upside of this stock? No, you have no other income method in place. You don't have an income method number one or anything else where your shares of stock are obligated, so we still have an unlimited upside. Right. So after doing income method number five on uh, October 15th, or actually I did income method number five on uh, September 24th, but after managing it on the 15th, okay, mm -hmm. my cost basis for my stock and put is no longer 3085. It's down to 3015. Remember, I took a 70 cent credit from the money net. Absolutely. Also, also called income method five, IM5. Okay. So I took a credit. Uh, from doing income method number three of 90 cents. Now, Mike, do I still have a uh, stock and a put? Yep. You've got a 30 okay. strike put now for November shorter term, and you still own your shares of stock. Oh, yeah. So it's a new uh, put. Okay. There, there's still a put, but it's a different put. Mm -hmm. But that put is the $30 strike. Okay. So with a cost basis of 29.25 and a put uh, strike of 30, what's my risk? Well, your risk is negative. You have a negative 75 cent risk, which means worst case scenario, if the stock reversed and went down to a dollar per share, you're still guaranteed, guaranteed to make 75 cents. That's the worst case scenario. If the stock right. continues to move up, you can still realize further profits. Let me ask you all something. Who else would like to be bulletproof going into an earnings announcement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, who else would like to know that there's no way, even with an overnight gap, uh, you, you don't have a finicky stop order in place. You've got a legal and binding contract that says, no, I can get out at $30 a share. Even if it's trading at 5 bucks. Mm -hmm. you can get out at $30 a share. Kind of cool. Okay, so that's, that's the uh, mindset that I can go into the areas now. Uh, negative risk means a guaranteed payout, and it's what we call bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Mike, we actually got Google slapped. <laughs> we got Google slapped. Google didn't like that on our site, on, on uh, radioactive trading, mm -hmm. that we said, hey, you know, there are some cases in which you could make your uh, stock risk-free. But it's true. It's really interesting that if you go to Google and you, and you try to get uh, options, trading strategies, and so forth, You'll go to pages that say, hey, you know, 100% gains are not uncommon. This is perfect for beginners, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. <laughs> Google will take you to that, but they won't take us to something very conservative that, uh, that shows how to uh, uh, keep yourself out of trouble in the first place, and under certain circumstances, you can become bulletproof. Well, we had to change our verbiage. We had to change our verbiage. Uh, I don't think it's a se sensational claim. This isn't sensational. Uh -huh. you've, you've watched me walk you through it. Everybody has seen this. Okay, but we're bulletproof, and that's kind of cool. Now, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Okay, The bulletproof vest, uh, or income method three, is only one of several ways that you can reduce the net cost basis of your stock and your put to less than the put strike price. Uh -huh. It results in a new position that has unlimited upside but no risk and is bulletproof. Okay, But... Uh, but it's certainly possible, and the details are in the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Like all radioactive trading income methods, uh, the bulletproof vest follows this saying, don't time trades, trade time. Mike, I did this spread trade as a response to what the stock already did. Yes. I'm not trying to predict what it may do. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and folks that are spread traders, you, you just might really ex uh, be excited by the prospect of taking a credit for doing a spread trade that can't finish against you. Now, here, here it is. Here's the spread trade. Um, if you recall, uh, September 24th, I, I'm sorry, September 14th. 14th. I'm buying, yeah, I'm buying a put option for $3.50, right? Yes, total cost. Okay. A portion of that is intrinsic value, $1.65, mm -hmm. and a portion of it is time value, $1.85. Now, as the stock went up, Okay, I lose the intrinsic value, right? 
Yes. Okay, but that's all right with me because as my put loses intrinsic value, it means that my stock has gained intr intrinsic value. That's exactly and, right. Yeah, and I own it. <laughs> okay, so it's just gone out of column A and into column B, and I own both columns. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's okay. All right, now look at this time value. The time value portion of this put option is $1.85. And the total pricing later on, it's uh, down to 252, but the time value uh, component of it actually rose. You know, the, uh, the, 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 the time value had been $1.85. Time goes by, the stock goes up, but because I bought that put far out in time, the time value swelled. And and this is a phenomenon that I discovered back in 2003 while trading eBay. Uh, I decided that uh, rather than capping the upside by selling a covered call, I would bring in, reel in my put option. I buy my put option far out in time, but I don't have any, any intention of keeping it. <laughs> I don't want to keep the stock all the way out till you know June of next year or you know January of the following year. I, I don't want to do that, but I'm mm -hmm. going to buy that put and with the uh, purpose of maybe doing something like this or maybe doing something else. It's flexible, okay? But it's really exciting here, isn't it, Mike? I mean, uh, instead of timing trades, I've traded time, okay? So we've reduced the gap to less than zero, and that makes us bulletproof. Mm -hmm. So we've got bulletproof trading. We've got no risk and unlimited upside. We've got income methods where you can do spread trades without adding any risk to generate income to further help the position. Mm-hmm. No worry about a drawdown, black swan event, anything along those lines, volatile markets. That's good right. stuff. If something really bad happens and, and, and you haven't done any income methods, you're looking at a, a loss of single digit percents. Mm -hmm. And if you have done income methods, you reduce that risk. Uh, and in some cases, you can reduce the risk to less than zero. I want to point something out. Remember that original setup and everybody looks at that and says, hey, you're spending a lot for insurance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, I spend a lot on insurance for my car, but I don't feel like I've wasted my money if I don't wreck my car every week or every month. I spend in, uh, insurance uh, on my home and on my life. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't feel like I wasted my money if I didn't die. All right, but <laughs> but the fact is, uh, Mike, that insurance is a part of life. Uh, and in this case, I showed how to use the insurance policy to kind of uh, generate some income. It's kind of interesting, right? Now, my casual observers uh, and even critics say, well, Kurt, you can't make money with this. Remember one fellow whose uh, testimonial now appears on the site, Mark, we'll say his last initials, T. Mark T. had an online debate with me. He said, uh, you can't possibly make any money with this strategy. Mm -hmm. Now this is how he trades. Um, now this is how he trades. And he says, you opened my eyes to the use of puts, and I thank you for that. Uh, uh, you can check it by scrolling through the testimonials on Radioactive Training. You might come across marks. It's, it's really inspiring. By the time my stock had touched only 29.40, Mike, I was guaranteed to make 75 cents a share. So it's not, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, hey, that stock has to move up 360 for you to make 10 cents. No, it moved up two dollars, and now I'm guaranteed to make some money. And as it turns out, after the earnings announcement, we ended up with uh, 385 dollars per hundred shares. And uh, that's because uh, it was bulletproof, left the upside open. Okay? All right, now, I'm not saying all this stuff to brag. What I'm saying is you can do this. This isn't any harder than selling covered calls. It's, it's easier on your pocketbook. You know? mm -hmm. I never had more than 6% at risk. By doing income method number five, we did a lot better than a plain vanilla covered call. Doing income method number three, one of several ways to bulletproof a stock, uh, we made it so that uh, couldn't lose before that earnings announcement. Yes. And uh, uh, cashed in at 33.10. So uh, we, we made 11.9% uh, after commissions while mm -hmm. never having more than 6% at risk. Mm -hmm. Mike, I could lose twice and win once and still be okay. So uh, pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to ask if there's any more questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, uh, run a, a quick poll, and I know that uh, we need to close up here. It's uh, it's about that time. Mm -hmm. We're actually a few minutes over, and I apologize for that. I'm going to ask you, what two things do you like about radioactivity? 
you like the idea of, of uh, your starting point being very low risk? Uh, do you like the idea of being able to adjust your risk on the fly? And no, oh, by the way, you can choose more than one. Okay, of these things that, that these features that you appreciate. Do you like the idea of being bulletproof but still hanging on to your stock? I think that's kind of cool because when your stock is up, that presents more of a problem sometimes than when it's down. When it's down, you just you know uh, grind your knuckles and say, okay, I guess I'll sell. But when it's up, sometimes you say, oh, geez, <laughs> should I get out now or not? Well, uh, bulletproofing um, makes it so that you don't have to worry so much about that. You can stay in the stock if it goes up, but you don't get hurt too badly if it goes down. You really can't get hurt at all. Um, do you like the idea of taking the income by way of spread trades and introduce no risk? When the spread trade is done in the context of owning the stock, it takes away the risk that it would normally present. Uh, do you like the idea that there's more than one way to skin a cat? We've got more than we've got several different income methods. Mm -hmm. okay. Mike, uh, the winner is starting with very low risk in case I'm wrong on a trade, and second place, very close second place possibility of being bulletproof and still letting it ride. Kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> what do you want to know more about? Kurt, did you just cut out on me? I, I, I don't think there so. There you go. You're good. <laughs> okay. You, oh, okay, good. <laughs> I, I did uh, put the... Um, Put the poll up there, final poll. Uh, we do have some other polls that we could could run, but I just want to re run this one and uh, respect everybody's time because, you know, I, I, I get to rambling, Mike, and I apologize to everybody if, uh, if we kept you longer, but I think uh, many of you might have had some fun. It, you know, we've got most of our audience is still here, more than 90% <laughs> of our audience is still here, and we normally like to finish it by quarter after. Uh, thanks for sticking around, gang. Okay. Very good. Let me go ahead and close that poll. And uh, that's more an internal thing, but uh, we, we did have uh, a lot of folks say, I already have the blueprint, what now? Um, I'm going to suggest that you use your support, okay? If you already own the blueprint, use your support. You get to uh, call in, um, not call in, but you get to write in uh, the uh, specific question that you have about specific income methods and maybe even your specific situation and we can give some some uh, uh, you know we can give some limited guidance on uh, some of your uh, personal stock questions and we can certainly certainly answer any question that you have about the income methods so that's the first thing to do secondly uh, fission is undergoing a transformation we're turning the fission subscription which is where you look over my shoulder and over the shoulder of Ernie and some other radioactive traders and look at our trades and how we respond to the market in real time. We're changing that, transforming it into an ongoing educational deal and it's really cool because there is uh, assignments, there's quizzes to complete, there's assignments for you to go and do and there's um, <coughs> um, accountability. You know, a lot of times we know what to do and we just don't do it. <laughs> but uh, when, when you are a part of a community, uh, it's, it's, it's different. You know, you have a live person and, and a program that you interact with. Uh, and um, anyway, I, I would say consider joining, uh, it's called Fission now, but we're changing it into Fusion because we're bringing a lot of elements together and that's what Fusion is, in this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, so that's that's a real good uh, question there, folks. I have the blueprint. What now? And then uh, second place was. Um, let's hear the offer for the blueprint. Oh, tie for second place. Let's. Uh, well, let me go ahead and put it up there. Let's uh, for the blueprint and also can those income methods be done in an IRA? Absolutely. Now you may have to do a variation on income method number five that we will discuss. You may have to do a variation, but uh, everything that I showed today is permissible with only uh, level one options trading clearance. It's kind of cool. Okay, let me hide that and uh, we'll take you to the site where you can pick up. Now that says 42. We had more than 70 come in.
uh, you can pick up the blueprint here on the products page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's three three thirty nine for the uh, for the blueprint itself. And uh, what's kind of cool is we we've had a couple of folks say, hey, you know, this is one tenth the cost of one of those weekend seminars, but it has ten times the value. Ten ten income methods, and uh, geez, it's a, it's a written document. You can refer back to it, and there's also support for the document. You know, and, and that's our aim. Our aim is to uh, not. Uh, not teach you just enough that you can go get in trouble and then come back for a higher price seminar. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope it didn't strike a nerve, <laughs> but uh, but but our intent is to really equip you. Okay, so the blueprint is um, uh, the way to go, and uh, and and if you already own the blueprint and you want to uh, expand your experience, I would say uh, think about getting into fission, uh, which we're going to start calling fusion here pretty soon, and. Um, if you have bought the blueprint recently, you can uh, get in for only ten dollars for your first month to mm -hmm. just test drive it. Kind of cool. Okay. Mike, am I missing anything? I know that a couple of no, questions. No, I think we got to wrap up, sir. I think we're all good and uh, got to respect people's time. We are at one thirty, so we're fifteen minutes over where we like to be. If you have any other questions later yep. on, just send us an email to support at radioactivetrading.com. That's right. All righty. Mike, uh, you're the best. I will see you next week. And uh, to everybody out there, happy trading. We'll see you out there. All right. Take care, everyone.